Hi, in today's video, we'll talk about one very important aspect of uh, supply chain, which is around managing warehouse transitions. Now, this is the Achilles heel of making any transition to a newer partner, because if the initial transition goes wrong, it's extremely hard for both the partners to forge a deep relationship and make the supply chain association successful. Over the 100 supply chains that we have handled in last few years, uh, what we have learned is that there are 10 mantras to really make any warehouse transition successful. If you follow these 10 basic principles of warehouse transition, it is a very high probability that transition will be extremely successful. The first and the foremost is around making the operations overlap between the new and the old warehouse. Typically, one of the mistakes that we have seen partners doing is that they don't keep enough buffer or continuity of operations between the old and the new warehouse. Therefore, there's always an extremely stretched timeline in terms of completing the transition process. So depending upon the scale of transition, I think one to two weeks is an extremely uh, important timeline where you should have overlap of operations between both the warehouses. The second important mantra is handling of goods at the time of transfer of stock in the older warehouse. This is one of the most important aspects of getting the warehouse transitions right. In our, our experience, we have seen uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the, at the origin warehouse, goods are not packed properly. Uh, the cartons don't have packaging slips. Goods are mixed. Many of the goods are sometimes not accounted for. These are regular operational issues and uh, for, all, for many of the brands and they can be easily handled in an ongoing operational scenario or a business as usual scenario. However, these very same issues become extremely hard to handle in a transition scenario. So it is very important that at the origin warehouse from where the goods are being transferred, there is a proper packaging of material that happens. There is no mixing of goods, at least to the extent as much as possible. There are box-wise labels for each and every packaging that is there. There's a proper loading and handling of the goods that happens because if there's a transit damage that happens, then it leaves a bad taste on both the sides. And while we do all of this, sometimes the basics like e bills are forgotten, right? And it leads to some certain uh, GST issues. And one very small but critical aspect is at the, at the time of origin of goods is Many times, as a part of ongoing operations, uh, brands keep unaccounted goods there which are damaged or they're waiting for liquidation. These are the goods which are typically out of your systems, right, or ERPs or WMSs. You have certain unplanned goods that were not there as a part of your transition planning or they have come at the last moment. So ensure these uh, unaccounted, damaged, unplanned stocks are also factored in as a part of your transition. So I think this is the second critical aspect which was around handling of goods at the time of transfer of stock. The third mantra for getting the transition right is around having a day-wise transition planning. Any planning that does not, uh, or rather which is not broken down at a day level is, is, is very hard to stick to in a real operation scenario. I think defining day-wise throughput handling capacity at the destination warehouse and the origin warehouse, which is the older warehouse, is extremely critical. The second element is build the inwards volumes gradually. If you can take an inward of 100 units in any given day, don't take 100 units on day zero or day one. So start with 50% of your capacity, go to 75% and on the third day, you should go to the 100% capacity. This is to take care of certain teething problems that typically happen when the first inwards come, right? So this is a very critical third aspect of uh, ensuring uh, that, you know, incoming goods are handled well. The buildup is very important. The fourth, fifth and sixth, the three aspects that I'm going to talk about now, they're around managing dry runs. So uh, a dry run is a military terminology where uh, it talks uh, about just going through the entire process uh, in, a not, in, in, a, in a managed environment or not a real life environment. Just like we have a dry run for a Republic Day parade or a dry run for a wartime scenario. Similarly, in a warehousing context, going through three dry runs is extremely important. The first one is technology systems dry run. 
right some very simple things like creation of the node for the new warehouse in your warehouse management system creation of the warehousing roles for the people there right defining the roles and responsibilities so that there's no data uh, you know uh, pilferage happens at the at the new or the older warehouse ensuring that the entire technology dry run for the inward process, how the purchase order is created, how the goods are taking inwards, then outward and the return process should also be as a be done as a part of the technology dry run. So this is the first and foremost, the first dry run out of the three. The second dry run is actual goods transfer dry run. So this is the logistics dry run between the old warehouse and the new warehouse. Wherever possible, if it's, uh, if it's uh, business feasible in terms of the cost, a proper vehicle dry run should be conducted to measure the actual time taken per vehicle between the two warehouses to ensure that there are no, no issues with no entries or any other regulatory aspects to ensure there is a proper dock management at the old warehouse and the new warehouse you know uh, if the dock levelers are required they are in place so I think logistics dry run is very very important because in your day wise planning you have factored a uh, certain number of vehicles per day 20 30 40 vehicles a day and uh, if there is uh, if the logistics dry run does not prove those timelines it becomes very hard to uh, stick to the transition timeline so that is the second aspect of the dry run the third dry run that we talk about is end to end operations dry run during this end to end operations dry run basically what we do is that we ensure that all the key processes for inwards outwards and returns are done as if they were done in a real scenario so for we'll take the goods as inwards we'll do proper quality check quantity check do the proper put away on the outward side do the picking quality check again packaging make the goods dispatch ready actually you know ensure in the dry run you uh, the goods are picked by a courier partner if required be right so the end-to-end -end operational dry run is a third of the dry run the first dry run was technology dry run the second dry run was around your end-to-end uh, -end ops dry run and the third dry run was the logistics dry run right so these are the tri three dry runs that are very very important the seventh mantra for getting the transition right is around training uh, always under play uh, but I think training of the new warehouse staff especially on the tech systems and on the SOPs is extremely critical for the transition to be successful uh, so uh, going through at least a minimum of three training uh, sessions right where we have uh, proper uh, performance assessment built in is very very critical for a transition to be successful uh, many a times uh, your warehouse might be operating on your WMS but in some cases you might be operating on a third party WMS or ERP so the training on the third party systems even becomes more critical in such scenarios the eighth mantra for getting uh, the warehousing transition right is around buffer capacity so build buffer capacity all said and done in a high highly intense environment of warehouse transition where sometimes millions of goods are being transferred over a two weeks or a one week window uh, it is just obvious to sort of foresee and preempt that some people will fall sick uh, some people will get tired and would want a week off or, or at least half a half a, not a week off a day off or half a day off right so and there will be unplanned things that will happen right uh, you wanted to have six docks functional for some reason you only have five docks at hand uh, you wanted inwards of certain number of vehicles day after day uh, for a particular reason there was a vehicle breakdown on the next day you have more vehicles you expected a put away efficiency of certain number of put aways per hour but actually on ground you know the put away efficiency is 10 percent lesser so there will be various events that will all accrue up to 10 to 20 percent of extra capacity that you will need if you want to complete the transition in a time bound and efficient manner so uh, creating at least a 20 to 25 percent buffer capacity is a good gold standard uh, in terms of uh, you know being uh, uh, you know successful in the warehouse transition the ninth mantra that uh, one could look at is around the outward dry run or the supervised outwards as we call it right the first few outwards for one to two weeks or first 
20 30 outwards are very critical outwards for any brand ensuring uh, there is a uh, pick accuracy there is a dispatch accuracy there is a documentation accuracy is extremely critical to get the output process right so ensure that uh, there is a enough uh, supervision that's built into the first a few outwards or the first few days of the outwards and the last but not the least or the 10th mantra is always like everything in life have a backup planning so and in this backup also what we have learned from our experience of handling close to 100 supply chains is that don't ever plan your sunday working on the first two sundays it is like your buffer capacity as well as a backup plan uh, the first two Sundays you should keep as a backup. Don't make that into your original plan of handling the transition because you, you, you should use these two days to catch up if there is some lag in your transition. Also to stabilize the processes, to ensure people don't fall sick, right? To, for trainings, etc. So we should not try to overdo and build a transition plan covering all the seven days. Many a times brands uh, really push for it and uh, the logistics partners they are not able to push back because they don't have the right reasons but i am sure if you explain it using this uh, this narrative saying that you need that time to stabilize what you've done in the six days you need this time to give a break to your team so that your team doesn't fall sick and you have continuity you need this time to train your team uh, trust me uh, your brand partners will be more than happy to support you also the second part of the backup planning is to ensure that you should have a shift planning should you need for two shifts as well as third three, three shifts uh, in transitions as i said uh, sometimes even uh, though you planned the buffer capacity even though you looked at other aspects uh, unexpected uh, requirements do come so if that were to happen then you should be ready with a uh, two and a three shift plan uh, that can uh, move into motion very very quickly so i think these are the 10 mantras that we have learned from our experience uh, of managing almost uh, 100 transitions so far do share if you have something to add uh, thank you